You guys see my screen? Yes. All right, great. Great, very good. Do you guys know the difference between conventional concrete and pre-stressed concrete design and construction? All differences. Can you list 10 differences? All right, I'm looking for 10 differences. Everything. Anything about pre-stressed conventional concrete? What do you mean the classes? Uh, yeah, rebar trends, PD cables, what else? Right, you take your time to figure out the main differences. I guess you know the reason that I'm saying this, right? We are here reviewing for the final. So this is why I'm asking you because you should expect a question like this. That's gonna be, let's say in one problem, you guys you have seen this before many times. A double T could be this or something else is gonna be very similar to it. Some double T is gonna be given to you. Certainly you are gonna have strengths. I'm gonna ask you some questions. I'm gonna ask for instantaneous pre-stressing force, effective pre-stressing force to balance, let's say 80%, 90%, the same thing that you guys have done before. Also, I'm gonna ask you to check the stresses, top and bottom, after pre-stressing and at the effect, which means at the service level. Easy question, you have done it now many times. All right, so this gave you number one, this gave you number two. So what is number three? Number three is gave you a beam. You have the beam, the dimensions gonna be given to you. Conventional reinforcing like rebars also is gonna be provided to you. And what you need to do is to come up with the number of strengths. Certainly you're gonna have the span, you're gonna have the loads, and you're going to have support width, like the column length. Material properties, the concrete strength is going to be given to you. Also, FCI is going to be given to you. Meaning that for the third problem here, you're going to have the beam span, dead load. You don't have to worry about this file. I'm gonna call it here review. I'm gonna post it in titanium. So you don't have to take any notes. Also, this is recorded. Life load. Concrete strength. It's gonna be provided to you. So silk weight, you should be able to figure it out because the section is not going to be that tough. It's going to be a simple section that, let's say, rectangular section. I'm going to ask you to find out the mom demand in terms of service load and ultimate load factor. 
and then find out number of strands to provide enough strength, like flexor strands enough to cover the mom demand. Also, you need to figure out initial pre-stress and effective pre-stress force. Of course, this is after you come up with number of strands. You can also check the stresses top and bottom. Right after the pre-stressing and at service level. After you do this, it's going to be asked you to do strength design, which means find female. And then find out the shear demand, V sub U, at D distance away or H distance away from face of support. After this, I'm going to ask you to say, find out V sub C based on the ACI method. and design the shear enforcement. And then of course, this gave you the shear enforcement. This gave you the minimum. When you do the minimum, you just need to follow the minimum code values. And then based on the demand, you need to figure out the shear enforcement size and spacing. At the end, you need to do the end block design, which means we're going to have a double T. And the double T, I'm not going to ask you to do the trend design for it. I'm just going to ask you to check the stresses, top and bottom. And for the beam design, you're going to do complete beam design, including end block and shear and flexure. And of course, you check the stresses. Good thing you should be able to use your computer and any software, the software that you have, your spreadsheet that you develop already. It's going to be very important that when you do your submitter, you need to give it to me in either typed or written format. I'm not gonna just be going here through the Excel sheet to find out exactly what the solution, which equation used. So I won't at the end the PDF. If you are gonna write it by hand, please make your handwriting very clear. And at the end, do scan to a PDF. If you like to type it, or if you have it from Excel, you'd like to print it to a PDF, you'd like to develop a PDF for it and send it to me, this is going to be fine. The time allowed is going to be three hours. It's going to start at 7 p.m. Be sure that you check the system. Be sure that you have the means to take pictures or do PDFs. I don't want someone to approach me, let's say, at 10.30 and say, I, there's something wrong here. I'm unable to upload. Yes, you are unable to upload because you're late. Now, since you have an idea about the exam, if I were you, I would start to solve it from now. What do you mean start to solve it? Start to solve it means, you know, 10 differences. Type them, read them, understand them. You can just look them up, you can Google them. You can take them from friends. But be sure that you understand them. Because if someone is making here a mistake, you're going to have here, you're going to be losing points for because you didn't have enough time just to figure it out yourself. For the double T and for the beam design, I'm sure that you guys, by now, you have very good spreadsheets that you develop on your own. So the time that you really want to spend here to do the double T analysis and do the beam design should be that long. I'm expecting, if you really understand what you're doing, that half an hour, to one hour should be enough to do complete analysis and also to create PDFs.
Now, any questions about the exam before I switch to the project submitter? Hello? Anyone there? No questions. All right. Thank you. I type one. Can you, can you go more into depth with, uh, about the double, double T question? Yeah. Double T question. You guys you have done it before. If you look at the previous uh, homework, you have done this already before. So what's going to happen if I give you here a double T? I'm going to ask you here, determine number of percent to support or to balance, let's say 90% or 85% of the dead load. Dead load means a self-weight. Okay, so I guess you know how to figure this out, how to find out number of strands. Which means now you have PI and of course you have also PE, the effective. And also you have the instantaneous pre-stress force. After that, I'm going to say here, find out or check the stresses top and bottom of the double T. Right after pre stressing and at service level. It's good. No, did I cover your question? No, oh, yeah, you got it. Thanks. No problem. So, the first problem here, which is about the double T, is gonna be like a stress check analysis. And for this one, it's gonna be like a design problem. Question is, if you are using here Excel sheet, do I need to have hand calc? It does need to be hand calc. But with your Excel sheet, let's give you the question here to you. Would your Excel sheet show the equations typed? Not just embedded in the cell. Let me give you here a quick example of what I'm talking about. Let me show you here an Excel sheet that I use for my work, let's say. Here it is. You see here you have lots of equations. I have here some equations, right? I'm referring to some equations, and here are the equations. So if your spreadsheet is showing all of these equations, you should be fine meaning that you should be able to print a PDF out of this. You create PDF out of the sheet so that I can look at it. If you just give me the equation like this, it's gonna be kind of impossible for me to back check it for each person to see exactly where the mistake is at. So if you show here all the equations and you show numbers, this is fine. So in this case, I know, for example, where is the SDS? Here's the SDS. I know the value, right? I see it. And I see here R and I, I'm sure that is gonna be there, right? Somewhere, here's I and here's R factor and so forth. So that you have your complete analysis as if you type this or you have it typed, right? Or you have it written by hand. But if you didn't show me all of these equations, I cannot consider this to be an answer. If this makes sense to you guys.
All right, now can we switch to the project submittal? Now I'm done with discussing the exam with you guys, the final. As we say, it's gonna be three hours, three problems, double T. First, some conceptual problems gonna be provided to you. How long do you have? Three hours to solve the exam and upload it. It's gonna start at seven, you're gonna be done it by 10 p.m. First one, you can do it now. You don't need to wait, right? The second one, double T analysis, stress analysis only, no design, no flexure strength, no shear strength. So the problem is gonna be a beam design, the rectangular section. You'll be given some proposed dead load, life load, and the beam self weight, you can figure it out yourself. Strength of materials gonna be given to you. I'm gonna ask you here to find out the number of strands. Number of strands you're gonna be using here for flexural strands and to balance certain amount of dead load. So you're gonna have your flexural design. Since you're gonna be doing here flexure design, of course, I'm gonna do here stretch check. Yeah, you're gonna have partial credit if you are close. But this is gonna be a simple question here for the 10 differences. It's gonna be a simple question, which means that you really need to articulate your answer. Don't make it vague. Read it a couple of times before you submit it. If you like, this gave you like an essay that you're writing. So you can start to write it now and then you're gonna submit it to your final. Don't copy it from people around you because once you see here that I see some certain words and, and sentences repeated, I'll figure out, okay, there is something going on here. After you do the flexure design, you do the shear design. This gave you the simplified method. This gave you the ACI method. And then at the end, you're gonna be doing an accurate zone design. The end block design is gonna be the approximate method also. So I guess we're done talking about um, your uh, submittal for the exam. Now let's talk about your submittal for the project. Today when you do your submittal, you have the final submittal. And also you can submit everything that you have changed. Or even if you did not change it, please do the full submittal today. This is what I want you to do. If there is any change, go ahead and do it. For each group, do you guys um, have it in PowerPoint or do you have it just as electronic files? I'm just wondering. Electronic files. Electronic files. And can you do PDFs out of it? Yeah, PDFs. Yeah, that's what you're applying. It's just PDF. a PDF, yeah. All right. Now, with the PDF, you know how to record like a video. You know how to develop a video out of the out of PowerPoint, right? Am I correct oh, about this? Uh, what do you mean like us presenting it or what do you mean yeah like a presentation
I've never done it, but I don't know if anybody else. Okay, let me show this. So let's say that you have a PDF. I know that you can in include it in here. Am I correct? You can bring a PDF to, a, to PowerPoint, right? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, okay. Um, all right. Let's say that I have here that I'd like to include the first slide here, I'd like to put something there. Let me look for something that I have. Great. All right. So here's a PDF. And here's a PowerPoint. All right. So I'd like to take here from here three slides and put them in here. This old PDFs can be any work that you have done with Excel and then you have done PDF with it. So I'm gonna go here to edit, you can do here a snapshot. Come here and just throw it in there. Second slide, so in the second slide, I'm gonna pick this slide here. Not the best one. Gonna pick it up from another slide set. I said, well, let me take the snapshot from here. And of course, I can resize it the way I want. Let's give you the last one. And go there and just throw it. Now I have three slides. And I'd like to record. I'd like to do a presentation with this. What I need to do, I'm gonna go here to slideshow. I'm gonna start here to record the slideshow. It gives you here a chance to record your voice with it. So once I'm gonna start to record here, it's gonna be doing um is it mp4 or maybe like one of this windows uh, files the window meta file give me a second at the end you should be able to get an mp4 if you want to so here it's gonna start to record Right, and then once I'm done, I'm gonna just stop the recording. I can just stop the recording if I want to. All right, once you're done, you're gonna go here to file. Now you'd like to save as, and then you can do it like Windows Meta file. This window meta file is going to include your voice with it. All right. So um, I'm going to give you here between today and the exam. 
to be able to upload this, to send it to me. You can make it very short, as short as maybe 10 slides. If you like to include conclusions, if you like, put your input there and just send it to me. If you like for each group to have their presentation live, I'm going to be okay with this. If you like to have it recorded, I'm also okay with this. You guys also, you know that you can do it with Zoom, right? You can do the Zoom meeting between you guys as, let's say, group, one group, five people, eight, ten people, and just record it together. And once you record it, you can save it and send it to me. Put it in a Dropbox and just send it to me or maybe Google Drive. So which one do you prefer? Do you prefer Zoom and just record it the way I'm doing it now? Or do you prefer to do it with PowerPoint? All right, do it with Zoom. All right. Just do a group chat between you guys or meeting, do a group meeting and put all the files, discuss it and just finish it. I'd like to so see this, this. that we don't have to. Sorry, Professor, I have a question about what you just yes. said. Yes. Um, so if we do it through Zoom, does that mean that we can just maybe display the Excel sheet and then we'll be able to explain yes. with our equations yes. there instead of putting it on a PowerPoint altogether? Yes. If this is easier okay. for you, go Thank ahead you. and do it this way. So the easiest way, okay. I guess Thank now, you. this is what I'm hearing from everybody. Everybody here prefers Zoom. Just do a Zoom meeting between you guys and present it and discuss it. I'd like to see a discussion between you guys. The good thing. Uh, another question. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. Uh, is this going to be a, uh, like an addition to the PDF we submit, or is it just going to be just the presentation that's going to be submitted? No, it's going to be separate presentation. This is going to be okay. your presentation. And and um, um, in the best scenario that we don't have it now, I'd like to see you guys. You're going to be coming out to the board and present it. Now we don't have it. Yeah, you walk me through the design. You discuss it all together. I'd like to see everybody here contributing, saying something about the choice that he really has done the design. So in your meeting, when you record it, I guess you're gonna have the entire group available. Let's say six people, seven people meet together, open all the files, discuss it, and show me exactly what you guys have done. No, this is not due tonight. It's gonna be due any time before the final exam, which means in a week from now. So you can take care of it over the weekend. Project submittal four is still due today, right? Or is that yeah. just going to be still due today? No, it's going to be still due today. Okay. So you have here one week, and the best time, I guess, is going to be over the weekend. Then you guys, you decide exactly how do you want to present it. Then you show me exactly what you guys have done. The most important thing that I want everyone who has contributed to the work to show exactly what he has done or to speak. I'm hoping to do this over the weekend. So over the weekend for the grades, yes, Andrew. All right. So I guess I'm done for today. If you guys have any questions, this gave you your time to ask. We can make it with the presentation. How about that? Since I'd like to do the evaluation for the project only in one shot. You just do here submittal four, uh, the last submittal you are going to do it tonight. What's for dinner? Uh, what's for breakfast? <laughs> um, I don't know yet. <laughs> Once I get home, I'm still at the office. I'll figure this out.
drones is going to be very important to clarify exactly your design. This is going to be great, of course, if you put them there. But if it's going to be very simple sketches with your analysis and design, it's going to be okay. Tiger King. Do you want me to watch it? How about you? Do you watch it? All right. Do you want me to watch it? Why? Why are you recommended that much? Okay. Can you speak? Can you just use a microphone or it's going to be tough? Yeah. What's up, professor? Yeah, uh, the show's really good. And okay. You should, uh, watch it. Well, yeah. I've seen my kids watching it. Uh, I didn't watch the whole thing, or at least one episode at all, because usually I'm busy. I'm just moving around, staying here five minutes. But why do you think I need to watch it? What's good about it? Tell me. I can't ruin it for you. You know. No, no. What is it's, good about uh, yeah, it? Yeah. It's crazy people that you would never think exist okay <laughs> all right yeah and if you like tigers then you'll kind of feel bad but it's okay you should watch it okay i will I, well i mean if you watch it you might have to watch all seven episodes together because it's super good but you know you can break it up it's okay i'll start tonight okay that's good okay all right thank you for the tip you're welcome Professor, yeah, I have a question about the uh, third uh, submission. Yes, um, I'm still confused about the table on uh, chapter nine three <clears throat> on the uh, anchorage zone. Um, I couldn't figure out how to get the MP and MC and those values. It's on slide eighteen. Here? Yeah, this table. Okay. Were you able to draw the stress distribution here? Uh, I can't hear what you're saying. Were you able to draw the stress distribution? Um, I didn't draw it. Uh, I just found the values. So you're able to find this value here on the top and this value at the bottom, right? Yeah. And of course you have this force. Yes. Okay. So here's what I want from you. Can you take a section right here, right at this point? Mm -hmm. Right here. And then find out the forces right in here with the point of application. And do the moment at this section. Can you do the moment at this section for all the stresses, all the forces in here? Or this gave it up? Um, so you mean when this force is uh, applied, I just take the moment, like the force times the distance? Is yeah. that, uh, so how many forces? I will do here, I'm going to do here two forces, right? This gave you one force, this gave you a rectangular force, right? Mm -hmm. This gave you one force. Resultant forces gave you like this, right? Right in the middle, in the mid height. Can I have another small force for this triangular distribution and stress, right? So you can find out the force, and with that, you're going to have this moment arm, and you're going to have also this moment arm, 
With that, you should be able to find out the moment at this point. Can you do this, or this is tough? No, it's not tough. Um, Good. I, I just need the uh, equation that I need to use. Equation to find out the moment? Not to find out the moment, but like... Okay. So... Okay, I, so, uh, so let's take it here step by step. Let's just do a step okay. by step. You have this force, right? Yes? Yes. You have the cre-stressing force? You mm -hmm. have the stress distribution. Mm -hmm. Can you draw it this way? Do you have a problem by drawing it this way? Just put here the top value. Let's say in this example, it's going to be 409, and here at the bottom is going to be 2250. Yes. Is this possible? And then you can draw this distribution. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. Now you don't need any equations for that. Now, can you take the stress here at the bottom and find out Two forces, one of them is gonna be this rectangle, the other one's gonna be this triangular stress distribution. Find out two forces, give you the force here for the rectangular distribution, and this one's gonna be for the triangular distribution. Can you do this two forces? Find them out. Can you please do um like a sample calculation and then I'll can for what? like just one example of them? Okay. For these two forces, I'm gonna say the stress right here. It's going to be equal to how much? 2,250. How about the stress here? 18 and 51. Great. Do you know the height from here to there? 6.35. If you take 6.35 times the 18.51 multiplied by the width of the beam, it's going to get you one force, which is this, the force in this rectangular distribution. All right. Yes, um, and that's the fourth column, right? Like the fourth column of the um, of the table. No, forget about the table. I'm not talking here about the table. I would like first to discuss this with you before we go to any table. Okay. I just want you here to find out this force and then to find out the other force, which is based on this triangular distribution. Mm -hmm. How about this triangular height? This triangle height. How much is this? We can say it's going to be 2250 subtracting 1851, right? Mm -hmm. Multiply by 6.35, divide by 2, times the width of the beam. With that, you're going to have the other force. Okay? So I just subtract um, 2250 minus 1851 and divide it by 6.35 by the you height. Know, I said multiply it by 6.35. You okay. find out the volume of the stress distribution. How do you find it out? You have the stress value from here to there, right? You find it the way you want it. Just mm -hmm. your numerical example is giving you 2250 subtracting 1851. It's giving you this ordinate, the height of this triangle. Mm -hmm. Now find out the volume. How do you find out the volume? Oh, you have the height, you have the width of it, right? The base of this triangle, which is 6.35, right? Mm -hmm. Divide by the width of the beam with that, divide by two, it's going to give you the second force, right? Yes. All right. Do you have the moment arm for the first force? Moment arm is going to be equal to 6.35 divided by 2. How about the moment arm to this force? How much is it? You're going to say two thirds of 6.35. Mm -hmm. Take the moment. Each force times the moment arm. Each force times the moment arm. With that, you're going to have this moment value. Are you good or bad? Can you do this? Uh, I still have a question. So yes, the last thing you said that we take two thirds of that triangle. So the height is 6.35 and then we take two thirds of that and then we multiply it with the force, the 376. I don't know the exact amount of force, but yes, by this force, yes. Okay, now I got it. All right. So that you're gonna have the first point here, which means the first one. Now, maximum moment is going to happen at zero shear, right? Mm -hmm. Can you find out here the point of zero shear for this distribution? It's going to be between 23 and 20, and I mean, 32 and 36 feet. All right. If I have your rectangular section, I'm going to say it's going to happen exactly at 409 here, right? Because this force is going to be the same as this force. Mm -hmm. 
All right. So let's say it's going to happen right here at this section. Can you do the same thing? Can you do one force coming this way, another force coming this way, find out the moment at this location? Is it possible to find out the moment for these forces? No, yeah, one forces. Um, we have here two forces. One force is going to be coming this way, other force is going to be coming this way. You know where is the point of application? You know where is the centroid of this shape? Take the moment about this line. Give me this force times this height, subtracting this force times this height. With that, you're going to have the maximum moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, that's easy. Uh, I get it, like how to get the moment. But I want to know how to fill uh, um, how to fill out the uh, the table. You don't really need to do the tables if you do it the way I'm telling you about. The table is a little bit different. Hold on, please, just a second. The table is just numerical integration. So the way that we have done it here, we find it by just finding out the volume, which also integration. But when you do it this way, it's like when you do kind of a step analysis. You take this here and cut it into very small slices. And for each slice, you find out the force that goes with it. And then after this, you find out the mom. OK. Um, I have a question here. Yes. Uh, you took you take a moment uh, about which uh, which point uh, about um, uh, and the level of uh, the pre stresses forces coming in. Yeah, because mainly you have two main points that you're interested in. Okay, that was my this problem. One. Yeah, this and, is the big one, and here's the other one, the max, yeah. which is this one here. Okay, and you take uh, at, on the top, you take uh, about which axis, the moment, about which axis? Um, about this point here, about this line. So let's say you're interested in the moment right here, which means this little value, you take the moment about this point for all of these forces. Okay. I'm not clear the meaning of which axis, but Main if, you have, or which if you have a force here, you just take this force multiplied by this height. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now okay. for each section, so for each moment value that you'd like to draw here, you just do a section, right? Mm -hmm. And this is going to get you for this exact distribution at four inches. The way that they have done it, they have done it at four inches. You see this four inch? Yeah. Exactly what you have in the table. Yeah. You cut it, you slice it into segments, very small sections. And for each one of the sections, you find out the force. And once you have the force, you have also the moment arc. And with that, you find out the moment. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I got it. Mm. I, ha I had a hard time to understand this one. Yeah, I got it. Okay, I'm sorry. Thank but, you. Um, no problem. But uh, just, you know, uh, in concrete design, concrete one, you guys, you have taken uh, uncracked concrete sections, right? in uncreate concrete sections and also in the structure steel. Steel one, when you do steel design mm -hmm. and you do uh, like built up sections. Let me open something here for quick for you. Uncreate section. Have you guys seen this before in your life? This for uncracked section, right? Analysis. For concrete design. So you're gonna have your two forces, you take all the compression, you put it into C, yeah. this one you're gonna put into T, and then you have this moment R, and then you find out the moment. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes like a T section, um, you can have it like this way, you're gonna have three forces. It's gonna be C1, C2, and C3, and each one of them is gonna have a moment arm that you call here Z1, Z2, and Z3. Yeah. Okay. Exactly the same method that we are doing here, but instead of having it graphically, here like we are including the graphics so that it's gonna be clear to everyone. But in the other method that you see here, you just do it in a table. It's gonna be exactly the same thing. If you like, I can post this slide set if you want to. This is also kind of numeric integration. 
or sections. Mm -hmm. All right, any other questions before we go? Did you guys do the SOQ yet? Anyone who has done it, done it yet? Who didn't do the SOQ? All right. If you like, go ahead and sign out, please. Type your name and... in the exam. You too. Have a good weekend, everyone. Dr. Abu Shabi, before you leave, can I ask you something? Sure. Um, you asked um, the first question. This, you said three, 10 different, uh, um, different between precast uh, and uh, conventional beam? Yeah, conventional concrete design, generally speaking. Any design, general part. speaking. Yeah. Okay, great, thank you, thank you. No problem. It's for Oscar and everyone. You can use the slide set if you like. It's gonna include some information about this. So it's gonna be slide set number three. And also you can Google it. What I okay. want you to do is to Google. Okay, I'll, okay. Read, open the, the reference manual, the book. Yeah. This manual, open it. You're going to see here lots of discussion on differences. Mm -hmm. Why do you think this is superior to reinforced concrete design, conventional concrete design? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And, I will do that. And, and be sure that you describe it in a good way. Don't make your discussion very long. Don't make it very short. Mm -hmm. Very effect. effect. Yeah. Short and. Yeah. Uh, Lies it, please. And, and have and, it ready in a piece of, I mean, in a, in a Word file or so. Yeah, and one more thing. So we are trying to do the Zoom uh, presentation, um, and we should rec record that and then send it to you as one file, or one yes. one of us one of us should send it to you, or we have to submit it. Uh, no, just one person, whoever one the coordinator, the person who usually send yeah. the information, right? Yeah, he's on. He's gonna be sending it out. 
actually we had we had four or five uh, presentations zoom presentation <laughs> but we didn't record it now we have to do it all over again <laughs> anyway thank you so much if you did you guys record it already no no we didn't that's a problem we already we had presentation because um it was it was sort of presentation type thing because we uh, we um calculated and then we presented each of our um ourselves calcula calculation but we never rec rec recorded so that's why we have to do it all over okay again. i'm expecting anyway. the presentation yeah i'm expecting your presentation is going to be somewhere between let's say 15 minutes to max maybe 20 maybe half an hour it's going to be the max okay it's my expectation oh. and okay. and what you can do you just once you're ready you guys you meet and then you record your meeting and then yeah. everybody's gonna be discuss exactly what he has done in the meeting and then you show it to me it's gonna be all recorded okay yeah so okay. it's not gonna be like uh like lots of effort is needed what you need to do is just open it talk together as if you are talking every time i guess when you guys are doing some work you need to communicate somehow Mm -hmm. So now let's yeah. make it like live and then you're going to save it as a video and then you give it to me so I can. Yeah, we, have done, we have done that, uh, but the problem is uh, we, uh, we haven't recorded that. Uh, so we have to do it again. Uh, yeah. And the good thing now when you are redoing it again, the good thing is um, if there is any mistakes or any issues or nothing is clear, something was not clear at the beginning, now everything should be clear, right? yeah yeah so it should be like a good a good discussion session if you may call I think, it. Yeah, I think so yeah i think we're gonna be over over it soon <laughs> maybe tomorrow night we're gonna finish it all right good luck okay thank you so much thank you all right thank you okay bye professor i have a question yeah uh so uh in the project the linear elastic method only takes care of the reinforcement up to h over three right and then to h over three why do you say h over three i don't know i thought that's what's uh like uh then what is two uh, two h over three what is like left of the depth h which is the ender block why don't you show me your screen yeah, sure. No tell me exactly what you're talking about. Just let me open the slide. Yes, you can. Latif, are you there? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, just uh, give me a second. Okay. Sorry. Right. Okay. Sorry. No, no, just make sure that you're still there. Ah, okay. So here's uh, the screen. So after we calculate the tension, we can get the area of the ties. Uh, so 
how is that uh, steel is going to be distributed over area which is... let's say let's say how many rebars did you get i'm just wondering the number you mean yeah how many rebars uh, so assuming uh, number four closed uh, ties how many so how many i got a uh, second i think it was uh, just a second uh six six rebars okay good so six yes. rebars i'm gonna put one right in the middle here just give you the first one all right mm -hmm. now i have mm -hmm. how many i have five so five. actually maybe a good option is maybe to offset it maybe two inches away from this t two inches right and left i'm gonna put the first one and then after that i'm gonna put the other two which means i need to center six vertical ties around the tension force t and they can put a spacing between a tie and the other tie maybe four inches to five inches if i put it here at four inches i'm gonna come here from this location t i'm gonna go two inches left just start to put the first line and then four inches the other line four inches the other line and then repeat this mirror to the other side okay okay but but uh like uh can, can you repeat that again i'm sorry like uh I like you, you talked kind of fast. I you, you have six rebars, right? Yes. This rebars gonna be vertical rebars. Yes. The center of the rebars is gonna be right at the tension force T. Oh, okay, okay. So which is h over three. Yeah, the location of this point. You figure it out. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And then you're gonna put yeah. three to the right of it and three to the left of it. And try to oh. make it symmetrical. So you center the three bars with the force T. Oh, okay. Okay. That now I can get it. Yeah, it's clear. Okay. Okay. Thank you. No problem. No problem. Good luck. All right. You guys have a good night. Please sign out.